Our next speaker is the co-founder of the on-demand mechanical service and tech startup, Micromech. He is also a consultant on occasion and states profusely that he is excited by all the opportunity there is these days and the people taking advantage of that to make a difference. Please put your hands together for Richard Roseboom. So sitting there watching everyone else prepare for their speech, I realized that paper has a clear advantage over technology in that you don't have to type in a password to see what you're looking at. So uh, yeah, I'm just going to pull up my nose here and uh, hit the button. Well, I'd like to start by thanking the PKN committee and also saying how dare you invite me out to do this because this is the most people I've spoken in front of and uh, I'm awfully nervous. So you might have to bear with me a little bit. but. Uh, looking at the topic for the night, open season, it's, it's a pretty wide open topic and trying to figure out what I wanted to do with the topic, I thought maybe I'll take some inspiration from where we are tonight and that's the Globe Cinema. So I thought I'd talk to you about what I think we all are going to agree is one of you know, the best movie trilogies of all time. Anyone have a guess of what that is? No, 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 no guys, come on, no. <laughs> No, of course, it's the open season. <laughs> now, this is practically canonized in our pop culture these days, and you guys probably are quoting their lines all the time, like uh, when Elliot uh, says, hey, uh, who's, trying to, who's trying to steal my plane? And, uh, and the critters around them just, <laughs> oh geez, I'm really bad at showing up on time, and, and apparently I'm bad at this on slides too. Uh, <laughs> anyhow, <laughs> the open season movie, Sony Pictures took a chance, and that was the first movie that they released, and now we get beautiful works of art like the Emoji movie. <laughs> so they really, they really took an opportunity and built it. But my story really starts when open season two was released, uh, back, in, back in high school when I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do with my life. And I knew I wanted to do something impactful, but I didn't really know how I could do that. Because I, I didn't think I could be a doctor, I, I didn't think I could be, you know, like a human rights lawyer or something like that. Um, and I found that I was like Boog at the start of the first movie, where he was, you know, just stuck in his garage, and, and he didn't really know what the outside world had, and didn't know what opportunities there were. It's, it sounds like you guys don't really know what I'm talking about. <laughs> you guys even know this movie? Um, well, so you've got Boog up there. He's played by those four people. You've got Elliot down here. He's a deer. Boog lives with Shorts Lady, and uh, she keeps him in his garage, and he likes the life there. But Elliot brings him outside, and he's got to like fight the hunter and goes on shenanigans. In the end, all the critters have some nice fun time doing some teamwork, and, and they solve some problems, and they, and they learn a lot about themselves in the meantime. So anyway, Boog. He's stuck in his garage, and he doesn't really know what's going on in the outside world. And I think I felt kind of like that. I, I didn't know what the options were. I thought, you know, I had to, had to go to university, get a degree, uh, but I, I kind of suck at school, so I didn't really want to do that. Um, and uh, and, and I, I thought that maybe, you know, if I venture out a little bit, I might discover something where uh, I, I have the ability to build something that maybe utilizes my skills and and lets me create an impact in the world in the way that uh, is maybe a little more unique to me. And once I got out there, I realized that the rules are a lot different. Just like when Boog was out in nature, he realized the rules around uh, using the washroom were a little different. I, yeah, I don't know. This, this doesn't seem to be like catching on with people. <laughs> uh, <coughs> but, but anyway, what all that led me to believe was right now we're in a very special time where there's so much connection and technology and uh, people coming together to do amazing things. And it's really open season for innovation and creating impact. And it's something that, you know, now, now you don't have to go through that regular system and, and you can really sort of think outside the box and, and create something, uh, you know, out of, out of uh, necessity or, or failure like these guys. So they uh, lost a pitch competition in New York and they went to uh, actually prove that their idea would be good outside of the system that they thought that they could get into. So this is Charlie and Samir with Sun Culture, which they founded back in 2012, and now they have more than 60 employees helping people in war-torn countries farm and use solar to uh, grow crops and manage their water. And they're, they're creating a big impact there. So I figured I could use maybe some business skills 
and some problem solving skills that I have to help lend a hand in the world. And, and so I decided that maybe I'd try and create something and I'd call it Neo Shift. But out in the real world, it's not all just opportunity. It's, it's pretty tough. And, uh, and, and it can be scary at times. So instead of just going into that, I wanted to build a bit of a foundation. And, and I knew I had to work to get to that end goal. Uh, so I started a marketing company uh, kind of right out of high school, and, and then now this company called Micromec. Uh, but I, what I realized is that even in these uh, intermittent periods where you're not doing that main goal, you still have a lot of room to really help out. Uh, just like Sony Pictures Animation does when they're making a good movie, they, they put a good message in there. You gotta express yourself. And, and I think uh, that's something that we can all learn. And uh, so even, even when you're doing something that's not directly for what you want to do in the future, the, the world is so open right now where we really can start to make that impact through the other things that we're doing in our day-to-day -day life, whether it's a job or, or, or whatever, just an interaction with a person. Um, and, you know, it can, be, it can be scary, and there can be a lot of trials and a lot of bloopers, and I know I've had my fair share of those, but it's also nice because everyone around and, and a lot of people in the community these days really want to help out. So, you know, it's all for one and one for all. And I think, you know, even better than going it alone, you can really rely on a group of people. And I've been so privileged to have so many people like my family and friends and people I've worked with to, to come around and help and, and we all help each other. Uh, another good example of big organizations helping each other is Adidas and Parlay. Uh, they couldn't have done this on their own, but they're able to take in millions of plastic bottles from the ocean and remake them into, into comfy sneakers and sell them, uh, sell them to the people and, and start cleaning up the seas and start cleaning up our food chain. Uh, so I want to leave you with one last question here. Uh, what is it that you're doing and how can all the rest of us critters around help out? <laughs> oh, and one other thing. Uh, don't quote me on any of this, because I only spent like two minutes on the open season wiki, so I don't, I don't know if I'm <laughs> <laughs>